the world of professional wrestling is full of real life heroes and villains, but rare is the personality who can inhabit one side of that spectrum for so long, yet in one terrible moment enter into irredeemable infamy. Well, the wrestling world in shock today, former champion Chris Benoit found dead in his Atlanta home along with his wife and young son. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Such is the chilling real-life story of Chris Benoit, an icon and mainstay of the business who served as an idol to many before ultimately becoming one of wrestling's darkest cautionary tales. Benoit was only 40 years old when he committed the unthinkable crime of murdering his wife and young son before taking his own life on June 24, 2007. Yet at that time, Chris was already an industry legend and veteran with over 20 years of experience under his belt. Benoit had helped continue a legacy of Canadian wrestling, having trained under the legendary Stu Hart and worked in his stampede promotion during the mid to late 80s. Benoit's dedication to a physical and technical performance style was cultivated thanks to his devotion to such performers as Stu's son, Brett the Hitman Hart, and former British Bulldog, the Dynamite Kid. Benoit was often favorably compared to the Dynamite Kid, aka Tom Billington, throughout his career, balancing athleticism and power. Benoit even adapted some of Billington's moveset, including a risky diving headbutt. The Dynamite Kid proved that you didn't need to approach 7 feet in height or weigh 300 plus pounds to be a superstar, and so too did Benoit represent this energetic yet dangerous style of pro wrestling as his career evolved from Stampede into a stint in New Japan Pro Wrestling before he eventually settled down into a thriving stateside career. We're talking about the Canadian guys, and I know you're tight with a lot of those guys, right? Yeah. There's, a, there's a real group that stays together, you watch each other's back, right? Somewhat. It's here within promotions like the World Championship Wrestling, Extreme Championship Wrestling, and Vince McMahon's World Wrestling Entertainment, where many fans best remember Benoit's work, as he won countless titles and accolades from tag team championships, US championships, and television titles, to WWE's World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 20. In fact, the 2004 image of Benoit celebrating in the ring with close friend and then WWE Champion Eddie Guerrero remains one iconic WrestleMania moment among many in the company's history. You know, I was, I was fortunate enough to have a dream and be able to pursue it and succeed at it. There was, of course, a darkness growing which couldn't be ignored. Specifically, the toll Benoit's in-ring work and lifestyle were taking on his personal life. We mentioned earlier his comparisons to the Dynamite Kid with regards to his impressive yet undeniably reckless style. Tom Billington was one of many wrestlers who dealt with numerous health problems as a result of the physical injuries and concussions sustained during his career. This was due in part to the fact that there weren't the same sorts of provisions in place as there are today with regards to concussion protocol. These days, a superstar will be pulled from active duty should they even be considered concussed or otherwise injured. The pro wrestling industry of the 1970s, 80s, and even the 90s was a very different place, however, and Chris Benoit was just one of the few who sought out self-medication as a means of escaping his everyday aches and pains. Despite this, any ideas that the Benoit murder-suicide was a result of a steroid-induced anger were shot down when toxicology reports couldn't back up this claim. A doctor who federal authorities say prescribed Benoit a 10-month supply of steroids every three or four weeks. It should be said that Benoit had received illegal steroids during his career and did have elevated testosterone levels at the time of his death, but the idea that the murder was an impulsive decision exacerbated by aggressive steroid use didn't fit with the deliberate, multi-day nature of the murders. It's because of the steroid rage uh, that everyone was using. And obviously this is not an act of rage, it's an act of deliberation when you do something like this over three days. Instead, a similarly dark narrative began to weave itself around the Benoit family, one shrouded in depression, anxiety, and chronic injury. Nothing about Chris Benoit's character says that he was capable of doing this. Images of Benoit's brain showcased an alarming amount of damage. So much so that it could be compared to that of an 80-plus-year-old Alzheimer's patient. 
Many fans and professionals within the industry attribute this damage to the countless blows to the head Benoit sustained over the years. This occurred from steel chair shots, from accidents, and even from that patented flying headbutt used by the Dynamite Kid and Harley Race so many years prior. I mean, he's a wrestler. He grew up amateur wrestling. He, he'll be back. There were other factors as well, such as Chris's depression over the deaths of close friends Guerrero and sensational Sherry Martel within a few years of each other, as well as a tension within his marriage to Nancy Benoit. Nancy was also in the business, having been previously married to Kevin Sullivan, while also performing managerial duties under the name Woman. Legal records show that Nancy had filed a restraining order against Chris for what she claimed as cruel treatment before doubling down with divorce papers in 2003. She would later retract both of these requests. You know, I think I got a pretty good grasp and I think I'm, I'm not an outsider looking in. Nancy's statement about Chris becoming violent in their marriage lent credence to this image of Benoit as a man being torn apart by the nature of professional wrestling and its lifestyle. How hard is it though to come back to the same world that pushed you into the depths of darkness to start mm, with? Yeah, the world doesn't push you into the depths of darkness. You do. The actual details behind the murder also speak volumes as to the mental state of Benoit at the time. Although Nancy had her hands and feet tied prior to her death, there were no obvious signs of prior struggle. Authorities suggest that Chris pulled a cord tightly from behind to asphyxiate her on Friday, June 22nd, but Benoit waited until the next morning to suffocate his son Daniel, drugging him with Xanax to make sure the boy was unconscious prior to the deed. Chris placed Bibles next to both bodies before finally using a weight cable from his home gym to hang himself on Sunday, June 24th, 2007. Given the opportunity, when it would have been easier for him to stay over in a town to make the next town, he would go home just to spend seven or eight hours with his family. Professional wrestling is an industry where the performers are constantly traveling, constantly performing, and constantly in pain. There's also a pressure to appear and behave a certain way, particularly during the era in which Benoit was groomed. I, I'm at a loss just because I knew him as a professional, and he was one of the most consummate professionals I've ever been around. Here, it was very much a hard man's world, and the WWE wasn't yet a place where the wellness of its performers was closely monitored, at least not in the way it is today. Run with it. And it's, it's, not, it's not the world of wrestling drove him to alcohol or the world of wrestling drove him to drugs. Ah, uh, no, no, you do that to yourself. Yet it's the Benoit tragedy which ultimately pushed the company into taking the positive steps it has to change its culture. The WWE's self-managing and drug use policies weren't enough anymore, especially now that the professional wrestling empire was a publicly traded company. The horrible deeds committed by Chris Benoit couldn't be taken back, but the one silver lining was that it could be used to instill positive change within the lives of professional wrestling employees going forward. What we're about is putting smiles on people's faces. This is the opposite of what we do. We're entertainers. It seems so simple, really. No more unprotected chair shots to the head. It's a strange experience to view old wrestling programming and see these spots as commonplace. Indeed, so many of us never batted an eye. Now with chronic traumatic encephalopathy injuries, or CTE, becoming an everyday reality, these simply don't fly. Today's WWE programming still features steel chair action, sure, but it's choreographed in a way where the impact is usually blocked or taken on the back. Yeah, yeah. He I'm quit, right? Yeah, I'm good friends with Brock. But he quit, right? Because he, he didn't like the life, the travel and all What's, of everyone's all that. Everyone's not means. cut out for it. Today's WWE also sees a much expanded wellness policy with suspensions and consequences handed out to any and all superstars who fall short of the company's standards. Mental health has also been taken into account, as evidenced by their treatment of WWE and NXT announcer Mauro Ranallo, who struggles with bipolar disorder. Overall, it's a night and day sort of atmosphere when compared to the Wild West professional wrestling territories of the 70s and 80s. Yeah, right? yeah. You understood oh, yeah. what you understood why he popped those pills. Um I understood why I didn't understand, you know, um I, I couldn't understand like how 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 they could 
how they could control you so much in the, in the way that they did him. And yes, it's easy to say that some of all of these implementations might have occurred without the senseless loss of life committed by the hands of one disgraced professional wrestling casualty. Yet, even as we continue to discuss the reality of the chilling and terrible life of Chris Benoit, there's some small comfort to be had at the thoughts of other lives and careers having been saved thanks to the awareness raised by one of wrestling's greatest tragedies. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.